Hi everyone, I'm Jim Rizzoli, and this is my brother Joe here. And uh, we are actually on a program produced by Diane King on the Ashland Cable Station, and our program, or her program, is called Connect the Dots. And we're very happy that we can provide information for her so that we can talk about these issues, get the uh, information out to people that are watching in the towns, local towns, and we're talking Ashland, Framingham, and uh, those type of towns. But the problem that uh, we're going to talk about today primarily has to do with Framingham and the adult ESL program. Now, remember what I said, adult ESL, English Second Language Program. See, the, the whole situation is this, okay? There's nothing wrong to educate immigrants uh, in a program, okay? But the fact that, first of all, they're adult immigrants, or, or in this case, mostly illegal immigrants that are in this program at Framingham, sponsored by the, by the Framingham schools, that's where we have the problem. And the reason why there's a problem there is because, and you know, my brother Joe is going to get into it a little bit more, but basically what is, what's happening here is it's illegal, okay, to use any functioning authority in a town to help illegal immigrants. All right? So now, you know, Joe's going to get into it a little bit because we're going to get into the, the legal ramifica ramifications on this. What is the law dealing with this? Can anybody just walk into the town and get involved with any type of program in a town if they're an illegal <clears throat> immigrant? We say no. The law says no. But the town, the city, as we are now, they're saying yes. So let's discuss the program here and find out why you know, we feel we're right that uh, we should not be using any of the services of the town to help illegal immigrants. Okay, Joe, so maybe you okay. can explain. <clears throat> well, you can use services to help illegal immigrants. For instance, they can go to the hospital. Obviously, no hospitals are going to say no to the, these people. But we're talking about uh, services that help them in their stay into America, like, for you know, housing, uh, uh, legal fees and all these sorts of things that are external, uh, even though they probably get legal fees too. Um, so let's let's just back up and connect the dots here, because there's a lot of connections here. A town of Fra a city of Framingham that was a town of Framingham. Originally, uh, what it does, they appropriate money to a com uh, thing called a Framingham Community Development Program. And what they do is they give, they have a, a lot of money they get from the federal government, and they then they decide, hey, let's give this money out to some worthy organization that needs it. And of course, you know, the illegal immigrants who are part of getting the money is going to be just happy. Well, I want to make a point about to this. Get okay. money. First of all, it's, it's CDBG money, okay? It's a com community uh, 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 block uh, grant, grant, okay? Yeah. And... Framingham, for, I'll just give you a for instance, because this is approximately, because I don't really know exactly how much we're going to be getting this year, but it's approximately $350,000. Now, out of that $350,000, well, we, we have a committee that gets together and they decide where this money is going to go. And the majority of it is going for administration fees and, and some other things. But they have probably 10 or 15 other organizations that apply for money. That you know, you're talking three thousand, four thousand, twenty thousand. In fact, the the most uh, the most money being spent, I believe, is twenty eighteen thousand uh, dollars for the ESL, the adult ESL program that is offered in framing. Well, they gave twenty thousand. Well, that was last year. It was even more the year be, uh, before that. So mm -hmm. the, it is going down. But the problem is, and he, here's what's happened. See, eighty eighty percent of, of the kid, not the kids, the, not kids, they're adults. 80% of the adults in the English uh, you know, program, the adult ESL program, are illegal immigrants. It's known, it is, that's what it is. There's probably six or seven hundred people in the program. So you can see that's a... that's oh, a 80%. That's an enormous amount a, of people. A majority of them are Brazilian. Yeah. So a lot of them, uh, you know, most of them are illegal immigrants, and most of them don't live in Framingham. Right. So... The, the problem is now we have that block, the, the block grant is only supposed to be given to legal immigrants in the program from Framingham. That's where the money's supposed to be going, all right? So what they did was, they said, okay, we're going we're gonna to find, you know, 
uh, you know, certain amount of people from framing him in the program, and that money, that eighteen thousand dollars, will be allotted to them. It might be good for you know a class. You know, let's say fifteen to twenty well, people 30, in a class. They, well, they, they say thirty. Well, whatever. But whatever, whatever the class is. But it's not really a, a really a good situation they got here because, first of all, to be considered now, remember you have to be a legal bona fide immigrant and you have to live in Framingham. So what we did, you know, in years past, we proposed to them that can you show us and prove to us that the people that are receiving this uh, grant money live in Framingham, okay, and are legal. I mean, we have no problem if that's the case. Well, what happened was, uh, this went to town meeting in 2013, and, you know, they weren't happy about what happened here because they knew that in order to give this money, it should have been done legally, and these people should have made, uh, you know, made, um, uh, were able to be in the program. That's, okay, they, they, were, they had to be verified. That's the point I'm making. Now, we asked them, have they verified the people in the program? And they said, yes. I said, well, can you show me the piece of paper that, or whatever documentation you have to do this? So they give us a piece of paper, and it just, down the bottom, it just said, are you a legal a resident of the town of Framingham? Are you... Uh, uh, a citizen of the town of Framingham, I believe, and are you a legal and resident? I think check that's what it said. So, so that's all they had to do. I mean, they just checked that off, and the the people in the adult ESL program accepted that as valid that they are legal in the in the program. Well, that's a problem because see that doesn't mean anything because anybody could say that they're a legal immigrant by checking a piece of paper. So we wanted them to actually verify it by some verification system. And so they... Let, let me read what Well, I they, the point is they never did, okay? Okay, so now we'll get into what actually happened. All right, so I wrote an I wrote a email to the community development program that Jimmy talked about, and I said, because Natalie Joseph runs it. That's I believe that's her name. No, Natalie. no, her name is not Natalie Joseph. Natalie. Na Natalie... Uh, I, 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 yeah, I forgot it her. It's, not, that, it's think, not Joseph. Her last name. No, I, I don't it's think not, it is. Oh, whatever. I just, I, I, I put the letter, Natalie. Natalie. It's, it's kind of a weird name. A Haitian name or something like that. Uh, we're going to cut that out. We did just say the the woman that runs the, the pro, I think her name is Natalie Jean. That's her name. Oh, okay. Maybe, Natalie Jean. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Okay. The woman, the woman that runs the program is Natalie Jean. And here's I said, Hi Natalie and members of the Framium Community Development Program and others too numerous to mention because I sent this to like 16 different people. Obviously, you're, you're not going to want to hear what I have to say, but I'm going to keep saying it. If you keep sending money to the Adult ESL Program Plus, you are in violation of federal law in the 1996 Welfare Reform Act. You could also be susceptible to lawsuits by the RICO Act in providing these funds and all people involved in their names and community leaders who are part of this could be named in a federal conspiracy through the RICO Act. This could also entail the mayor of Framingham, the Framingham City Council, and the school committee in the superintendent of schools and your department. In short, in providing services and money to people who are illegally in the United States of America, you are in violation of federal law. That's called aiding and abetting. It's a federal felony. Uh, Framium Town Meeting on numerous occasions has asked you and has asked the Adult ES program, ESL program to stop funding, stop providing funds to people if they are in this country illegally and who are in that Adult ESL program, possibly many hundreds. But obviously they have not listened. A simple request for information was ignored. Why? Because the program, program is breaking federal law. And so now we get to the videos, as I say, watch this video, which was of the town meeting, of the town meeting talking about this program and what their concerns were. And their concerns obviously were uh, more um, transparency and, and letting us know what's going on in the program. Uh, if we see the, well, they, they wanted to make sure the people in the program right. were, were, were uh, vetted Okay, so that right. they were legally in the program. Are we going to go to the video or no? Whatever. Um, well, we can. We can. If we you will, want, if it comes we, up, we can. We can play that video to show you what was said at town meeting. Okay. So let's take a look at that video right now. Okay. Now, 
This video is being misinterpreted by Miss Natalie Jean as saying, oh, Tom Meeting approved this and they thought it was great. No, they didn't approve it. We have been wait they were waiting for information to come back. Nothing came back. They didn't go through any agency to prove legality, uh, citizenship, or anything. Nothing. See, the, the, the thing is, in order to prove a person is legal in this country, you have to have some verification system. Now, there is a, a program that the government does support, and it's called E-Verify. Right, right. And, you know, a lot of people, they kind of bitch and moan about this, saying, well, it's not accurate, this or that. Well, it's, it's, as, it's as accurate as can be in regards to if these people are using false Social Security numbers and those type of things. So we feel that they should have used this type of program. But remember, they're not using any no, type no of program, program no nothing. Program. They just feel that that person signing their name on a piece of paper is verified. Now, remember... It says under penalty and perjury of, you know, in law. I'll get into that. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay, so anyways, um, I goes, not only, I goes, not only that, but we we have school property be, that is being used to aid these people who are in this country illegally through programs that should only go to people properly having permission to be in the USA. Now, I quote the law, the, um, the United States Attorney's Office, the regulations, which I'm going to go into in a second, of what those requirements are and what does it mean to harbor illegal aliens, and we'll get into that in a second, because we've got, we got to go into something else here. So anyways, I said to Natalie, please bring this email concern and petition against funding about all this to the uh, February 1st meeting, and, uh, and and have it in reserve for all other meetings. In other words, you're going to have, I doubt if they did it, my letter. Well, she didn't refer to it. So. Right, my letter of complaint, which they're not going to want to go to. These people are just liars, but that's another story. So anyways, Jimmy went to that meeting. I, w I wouldn't say they're liars, Joe. Well, they're just not honest. Yeah, they're not. Okay, it's a big difference. They're honest, but to say okay. to say the video, oh, that the town meeting let like that. That's a lie. Well, I, th there's another aspect of this too. Okay. Okay, whatever. But, but we finish what you want okay, to well, say. Well, I'm, I'm saying so now. You, have, I thought you were going to talk about going to that meeting. Uh, well, let, let's just let's just go back a year. Okay. We wrote to the. Oh, HUD. We wrote to HUD, okay, mm -hmm. Housing of Ur Urban Urban Development. Now HUD, HUD, you know, is giving out the CDBG money, okay? They're giving out that grant money, and you know, I know it's not a lot of money, okay, but that's not the point. You know, you got to remember whether you're whether you're dealing out pork money, billions of dollars that's illegal, okay, for projects that aren't right, or you're giving out a hundred dollars for a project that's not right. It's still illegal. You got to deal with law here, okay? And so we wrote to HUD, and they were concerned. They were concerned that money was being used in this program, uh, you know, especially if the people in the program didn't qualify. All right. So what did they say? They said, "Well, um, you have to get in touch with the, the HUD program in Massachusetts." And so I got in touch with the HUD, pro the HUD program in Massachusetts. Now the problem is, they did not reply back. Okay. They didn't reply back. So they they said now, when they replied back to uh, Natalie Jean, they said that uh, because, you know, the framing of the town, the framing at the, at the time asked, is it okay what we're doing? Is, is it, uh, do you accept the fact that we just have a person sign a piece of paper with a little check mark saying that they qualify? And the HUD program said yes. Yeah, but we have proof of that? Yeah. So, so basically... Uh, the HUD program is saying this that that that's right, but they're breaking the law by doing that. Okay, well, that's the whole we'll point. We'll get onto that. Too. Okay, so just so just because the HUD in Massachusetts now remember this was under the old uh, previous administration, uh, Obama administration. So all the people in Massachusetts basically love illegal immigration anyway. So obviously, what would you think you're going to hear from HUD in Massachusetts? They're going to obviously say everything and anything goes when it comes down to illegal immigrants. And so they would give them, you know, okay, they can do whatever they want. If they sign a piece of paper saying they're legal, then you've got to believe they're legal. We have a problem with that. So uh, anyway, I, maybe I should talk about the meeting, all right? You want me to talk about that no, now? Go ahead, go ahead. Cause I well, anyway, I went to the meeting. Uh, you know, they were having a meeting uh, talking about the funds for the CDBG fund, funds. And I, I went to that meeting, and I actually, you know, got and spoke about my concern. And they that, were happy to see you. Well, they, I went to that meeting and talked to them and, and uh, said that, you know, you're using this money, and the people in that program have not been vetted properly. 
uh, to receive that money because you don't know if these people are legal, first of all, legal residents of the town or they're legal citizens of the town. Again, they just said, well, HUD said it's okay, it's okay, and town meeting approved it. Town meeting did not approve it. Okay, town meeting had concerns in that video we showed you, the concerns were brought up. So we, the Rizzolis, are not making something up here. The town is doing everything within their power to skirt the law here. That's what's happening. They are breaking federal immigration laws. Now, hey, Trump's in power now. Okay, the Obama administration is not running the show anymore. Trump is actually trying to make an effort to curtail illegal immigration. Chain migration. Yeah, it's chain migration. One of the biggest problems. And, and one of the biggest, um, uh, you know, uh, the thing that really brings people to a town is people learning English. So the adult ESL program sponsored by the Framingham School System is a program that actually is aiding and abetting the illegals to come here. They're breaking the law. Because they're providing them an avenue to learn English. They're not supposed to do that, okay? So, I mean, if you're, if you're going to teach people English, first of all, use your own private money if you want to break the law. But you're still breaking the law. You, you can't use school money. You can't use grant money. You can't use any money to help illegal well, you, immigrants. You can't use buildings to give oh, them a well, building. I mean, mo most of them, you know, they're, they're going to build a new school and how many classrooms do they say? Three or nine or six classrooms are going to be devoted to English well, language. I mean, the, I mean, that's for the kids, but I'm just saying, it's showing you that the parents are bringing in this humongous amount of kids because the parents are being taken care of on the other end of the illegal system. Right. The kids, you can't do anything with it. The kids are here. Okay, the, the law says we have to provide for them, but not the adults. Okay, now let's get into what happened, uh, more of what happened. I, I wrote to uh, the superintendent of the schools. He got that part of the email. Nice guy, Robert Trumley. I have nothing against the man. I actually went and talked to him, and I have nothing against the man, but we got a, a problem with interpreting what is harboring illegal immigrants. So he, he gets back to me and he says this, good morning, uh, in response to your email, please be advised that the main funding source for the adult ESL Plus program is state funding through the Massachusetts Department of El Elementary and Secondary Education, DESE, which does not require any checking of immigration status for student enrollment. DESE requires us to ask if students have a social security number and would be willing to share if uh, it for data collection purposes, but a social security number is not required. Okay, let's get into this for a second. Social security number for an illegal immigrant? It's probably from a dead person that lived, that's either live in Puerto Rico or dead. Or, or it's from children. They, right, they or children. children. They don't have social security numbers that right. are legal and they don't check that it. That are illegal. They, well, no, they don't. Okay. They, they, the they illegals have, don't. Right. The illegals don't have social security but they, numbers. But they have social security numbers, though. But they're just, they've been stolen. Right. Okay. And, and the thing is, if they, if they did check the, the uh, social security numbers of them, uh, they would find out that these social security a not to those people. And these people should be in jail. But he did he did say something there that's absolutely wrong. He said D-E-S-E. -E. Right. Because he was talking about children. Well, no, he said student enrollment. No, no, no. But they're, they're, not, they're, they're adults. They're not student kids. I understand They're that. adult well, students. Well, that's the question. I don't and that's what's wrong. Okay. You can't... You can't educate adult illegal immigrants because it's against the law. Okay, okay so we're going to, okay, so, right. All right, so there he says, similar to the public schools, but see, he said student enrollment, meaning for the adult people. He goes, similar to the public schools, Framium Adult ESL Plus is not required to check immigration status. The pro program receives a small grant via the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, which are federal funds. The CDBG, BG committee has worked with HUD to develop acceptable registration forms and enrollment requirements. Framium Adult ESL Plus follows these rules for all students funded through the CBDG funds. These requirements including being a Framium resident, resident, qualifying as low income, and having a green card or being a U.S. citizen. CDBG funding supports approximately students 60, 30 students per year. And then it goes, I hope I hope these facts help to clarify how we support the many, many parents of our school-aged children, among others, who are working so hard to gain English language profic proficiency 
as partners in the important work we do in educating our entire community. So the point is, this is save the whale time. They look at, oh, we're going to teach these kids, these people English anyway because they're here with their kids. No, you don't. Why? And I'm going to show you why. You have breaking federal law. Now, we go to the, the link that I gave in the email that I sent, which probably nobody read. This is the United States Attorney's Office. This is federal law, and it's called 1907 Title 8 U.S.C. Dot 1324 under offenses. Okay? And it just talks about what the offenses are in bringing illegal Im immigrants and doing stuff. But we're concerned with the name under the, under the name here, harboring. It says on the section 1324, blah, blah, blah. It makes it, uh, yeah, it makes it an offense for any person knowing or in reckless disregard of the fact that an alien has come to, entered or remains in the United States in violation of law, conceals, harbors, or shields from detection, or attempts to conceal, harbor, or shield from detection, such an alien in any place, including any building or, or any means of transportation. Do you notice that? That's under harboring. It says, knowing or in reckless disregard. We feel, and the law is saying here, that the Framingham Public Schools, the CBDG funds, the town of the city of Framingham, the mayor, the city council, the legal departments in the city of Framingham are violating federal law. Now, it says, as it goes on again, it makes it an offense for any person who, knowing or in reckless disregard of the fact that an alien has not received prior authorization to come or enter or reside in the United States to bring or attempts to bring to the United States in any matter whatsoever such alien, regardless of any official action which may later be taken with res respect to such alien. Now remember, they're saying that their, their Massachusetts HUD is saying this is okay. This is saying, regardless of any official action which may later be taken with respect to such an alien, because they probably realize people later on are going to try to skirt the law here, like with the, all this DACA stuff and the, and the children and this and that, and they're going to try to skirt the law to try to reward things, and when it's a federal felony, this is federal law that they're dealing with here, and there's penalties for it. It says, uh, penalties, the statutory maximum penalty for violating the this 1324 one, rule, a, alien smuggling and conspiracy, is uh, harboring, uh, uh, it said, uh, 10 years, uh, under Title 18, imprisonment for, for not more than 10 years, or both. And for harboring, encouraging, inducing, or aiding and abetting is uh, a basic mandatory statutory maximum term of imprisonment is five years. Because they, they also dealt with smuggling, which is way worse. Uh, so anyways, uh, which is way worse than yeah, uh, conspiracy. So five years. This is the federal felony, and yet we got the schools departments and everybody that runs the, the ESL program. They're not. They don't want to answer the simple questions the town meeting asks because they know, or they uh, are in the process of faking knowing that these people are violating and breaking federal law. Well, anyway, so I, I think that you can all see this. There, we're, we're trying to. We're presenting a case here, okay, <clears throat> and the case is very simple. We're just saying that the the uh, the adult ESL program that is being run in Framingham <clears throat> is breaking federal law. We have the law. We have the penalties for those who are encouraging people here in that program, which again makes it illegal to do. They're breaking the law. So. Nobody wants to respond to this, and we haven't had any response except for the fact that they think just because HUD approved of them signing a piece of paper 
uh, saying that they're legal in that program that they can get off now, okay? Well, that's not the case. Forget the CDBG money. Let's just deal with federal law and the fact that we have a Framingham you know, school system that is actually putting on an adult ESL program that's being, actually, they do have money coming in from areas. They have okay? private money. They get private money. I'm not saying they don't, but there's probably it's, other money coming still in. still doesn't matter. But I, I don't doubt there's federal money coming in. That's not even the point either. Extremely the point happy. is that you're using school property, okay? Right. School property now. That school property belonging to the city of Framingham, taxpayers of Framingham, you're using that school property to harbor, to harbor and educate the adult uh, illegal immigration, illegal immigrants who are trying to learn English. And that is not something that uh, is promoted or uh, accepted they're, they're by federal law. It's lawlessness. Right. So, so they're breaking the law. Uh, you know, we're trying to oh, let people know about it. Let me tell you, oh, oh, another joke here. This is funny. It's called the Adult ESL Program Plus. You know what the plus stands for? Teaching these people to become U.S. citizens. And you know what's really funny? These people are driving, most of them, to the program with fake licenses, yeah. false documents, everything will See, the, the, the thing with the illegal immigrants uh, in, in Massachusetts, because since we live here, and Framingham since we live in Framingham, that the majority of them have, have false documents. I already mentioned 80% of the illegal immigrants, um, well, you know, they're, at, it, you know, 80% of immigrants here are illegal. So you do have some coming here legally, but most of them are illegal. And in order to survive in Framingham, you have to have false documents. So they're going to have false green cards. They're going to have all these things. Okay, false licenses, false documents for everything. The only way you're going to cut through that is if you use some verification system to try to show who these people really are. The, the, the city does not, the city of Framingham at this point, does not seem like they want to do. They that. don't want to discuss this. Yeah. And if you want to see the things that they are doing on my website, RizzoliTV.com, the very beginning of it, the, when you get into that site, shows you the false documents that they've used in the past to to uh, fake everybody out, social security numbers, this and that. And there's a whole mess of things that they've done in the past. We haven't seen much of this in the paper lately because the Metro West Daily News loves illegal immigrants too. Why the heck put anything in the paper that shows the latest, that exposes what they've been doing? But anyways, that shows you what they've done in the past, and they're still doing it. It's just that you don't see it as much because this whole thing with the illegals has been an acceptance. A wink, wink. Oh, this is what we do. It's like Mr. Trumbly says, well, we've got to teach them English, and that's the best thing we could do because everybody will be happy. <laughs> well, it's, it's like saying, you know, uh, there's people uh, robbing banks. And yeah. you got to help them to but, rob yeah. banks because yeah. don't, you know, robbing the banks is going to help uh, them yeah. provide for their families they, and give them money. They're going to be happy. Well, I mean, it is a federal law to rob banks, too, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So, That's helpful. Well, anyway, I think that pretty much sums it up in the case, again, uh, in this uh, show of connecting the dots here, shown on Ashland Cable TV because Framingham Cable TV. Well, we can't talk you know, basically kick yeah. this off well, that yeah. station because we can't talk about well, we don't know things. why we're kicked off. We're well, just kicked we're, off. we're kicked off well, because, you know, we present information that's hard-hitting information. Yeah. And Framingham does not want people to see this on yeah. right. their station. Well, the, well the, the, the list that they have, the town list that has 800 people on it that talk about topics, they don't want to talk about this because if you say illegal immigrant, right, right. oh my God, that's racist. Well, the, the whole thing, the whole thing is... You know, we're a city now. We're supposed to be more open of discussion uh, of these yeah, things. They're open already. We feel that, you know, I don't think there's going to be much discussion because you have people that are that are actually doing things that are illegal, okay? And, and now it's going to be interesting to see with the new mayor, is she going to take a stand for law now, okay? Or is she going to go the other way and support, you know, illegal Well, let me, let me bring out this fact, too, because this was brought up in the last email I sent. All the people on the city council, I'm not sure if the BNG and all those people, but the, the people that are in the town that swear an oath to the Constitution, they swore an oath. Now, that's a contract to the United States that they're going to uphold the Constitution and the Constitution and the laws and everything that go with it. This is federal law. If they fight this, 
then they, they, their oath that they have sworn are no good. These people either get with it or resign. Because they've sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws that, that are under that. This is federal law and you're going to see them skirt it and lie about it and try to avoid it. And they're breaking their oath. That's a contract. They broke the contract. They don't deserve to be in office. Right. The traitors. Treason. It's, this is treason. Right. So anyway, uh, you know, we'll have to see how all this is going to play out uh, because, you know, already they've been, they've been doing this for years, breaking this law, okay? You know, and since nobody, you know, in the, in the present, in the past administration, the Trump, I mean, not to Trump, the Obama administration was, was for all illegality of every which way, um, they think that they can continue to get away with it. Well, hopefully, you know, you know we're going to put some pressure on the Trump administration to look into this even more so because we feel, okay, and, and we're going to probably end it here, we feel that the adult ESL program that is being presented by the Framingham School System helping the adult ESL, uh, uh, adult ESL uh, students learn English is against the law and it should be shut down immediately. And all, well, not shut down, but cleared out of illegal immigrants mm -hmm. and only presented to the legal immigrants. Okay? We have no problem with adult immigrants learning English. We just have a problem when you have so many illegal immigrants. You're not even from Framingham. You have so many illegal immigrants in the program. They're pushing the legal immigrants yeah, they that to deserve to be in the program out of it. They have a lottery. Okay? So it's not fair to the legal immigrants in that program because you've got too many. 80% of the people that are in the program are illegal immigrants, and so they're always going to be way ahead. So the fact that they you know? made a lottery shows you that they had a total disregard for people who are trying to be real good citizens in the United States. Right. Can well, you imagine being a citizen, a person waiting to get in, and they've had they've gone by all the rules, and all of a sudden, some guy that just came through the border two weeks ago gets in a class. So, the, so we feel again that this is this is really jeopardizing the the legal immigrants in the town. Okay, to learn. And that's another problem that we have. But the majority of these people are from out of Framingham. Right. Okay? And why they're not looking at that, I, I have no idea. Because the program should be offered, and the only people that should be in that program should be legal immigrants from Framingham in the program. Mm -hmm. There yeah, you go. People driving from Rhode Island. Yeah, I mean, this, and, they're, and they're not coming clean. Oh, oh yeah, these are for Framingham residents. Liars! Yeah, they're you not, people are liars. Yeah, they're not. They're not telling you the truth here. So basically, uh, there's a lot of things that they're going to have to do here to make this work if they want it to work. If they don't want it to work, then the whole program should be shut down because they're breaking the law. And all those people, yeah, they should okay, go to jail. Yeah, all those people, the school committee people, uh, you know, all, all the people, the the, the uh, you know, uh, the mayor, the city council people, if they support this program. They're supporting lawlessness. They're right. supporting uh, illegality right. and breaking of the law. Right. And they should be dealt with too. But, you know, so far, in Framingham anyway, what we have seen is that you can break the law in Framingham and get away with it because so many people are doing it. Right. And, you know, it's just a shame to see that Framingham has gotten, uh, you know, we call Framingham City of Villains now, the true name, because the fact that... They've been breaking the law here for so long and how they deal with illegal immigration that everybody thinks that it's the way to do it. I mean, you just do it with illegal immigrants. I mean, that's not the way you do it. You do it right. And we want the, the city to do it right, but so far they haven't come clean to do it right. And uh, we hope that we can get some more people to understand this, listen to this uh, information, and uh, force the city of Framingham to comply with federal immigration laws in all, all laws dealing with people who come into this country. Well, anyway, I think that's pretty yeah, much it. Yeah, we summed it up for, for you folks. I think we gave you enough to think about, uh, and, uh, and we appreciate, again, that we can present this information on uh, this uh, show with Diane King, Connecting the Dots, and uh, we'll try to bring you more information uh, as time goes on on the repercussions of this, because we're not going to stop until we get this uh, resolved. So anyway, I'm uh, Jim Rizzoli. I'm Joe. And uh, we will talk to you another time. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye now.